quick thank you to our sponsors for making this podcast possible. They keep this show free to listen to. This episode is sponsored by Byheart. Byheart is on a mission to make the best infant formula in the world. They use a patented protein blend that gets closest to breast milk. It includes alpha lac, the most abundant protein found in breast milk, and lactoferrin, the number one protein found in colostrum. Byheart's easy to digest formula and patented protein blend includes prebiotics and an 80 20 whey to casein ratio, just like an early breast milk, which is tailor made for a newborn's digestive system. Byheart is made with certified clean ingredients, plus, it has no soy, corn syrup, GMOs, or palm oil. Curious about Byheart? Redeem your welcome offer at byheart.com forward slash podcast with code PEACE. It's available for a limited time, so don't miss out. That's byheart.com forward slash podcast with code PEACE because every baby deserves the best start. Hi, I'm Michelle, a mother of two teens. 13 years ago, I traded in punishments and rewards for connection. Now I prioritize relationship over behaviors, utilize play as a parenting tool, and set limits with empathy instead of consequences. Each week, I share my journey and interview clients, experts, and followers. Thanks for joining me on the Peace and Parenting Podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the Peace and Parenting Podcast. I'm Michelle, and I have a guest today, Stephanie, who has a parenting question, and she is going to ask it. So, Stephanie, would you introduce yourself? Sure. So, I'm Stephanie. I live in Virginia, and I have four children. They're 6, 10, 12, and 14. I'm a stay-home parent, and then my husband works um, full-time, mostly from home. And I do have a question. So, preface, I've done a lot of work over the years and learning to set boundaries and set them in a way that I can handle if the kids get upset about those boundaries and not then take the next step and punish them for being upset about their feelings about those boundaries, which a couple of years ago I was not equipped to do. do. Um, Yeah. But now, you know, if I'll say like, you know, we've already, you know, if it's for the screen, say we're not going to do any more TV right now. We're not going to turn it back on. And, you know, sometimes, especially the younger ones will get upset about it. And it's, I'm at a point where I can say, well, I'm going to turn this off and that's what we're going to do. And if everyone gets upset or even if they're whining or even screaming, which can be a lot for the sensory system, like either way, it's like I've done what I need to do to do what I think is needs to be done for everyone's health or safety or whatever. Yeah. Um, but where it is, where I'm still struggling is, and I hesitate to even use the words I'm using because I know it's already not a good framing of like, what if I need to require the kids to do something where right. how do I no, get I them to do to I don't do think this? that's I think it's cooperation, right? That's really yeah. what we're talking about. We need at some point in time in our parenting, we need cooperation from our kids because we can't just have them say no to everything. Right. Right. And you know, there are certainly times where they they do co they are great kids. And um again, I think I do have a at least good enough relationship uh with them that there certainly are some times or plenty of times where they're, you know, not driving me crazy all the time but um, yeah. in that in that sense but there are times I can um, give an example uh, one of my children is doing a, a summer school course it's online you know she's pretty she's very independent about it she goes she does her work but she um, on the second day of the class she came running up from she's got a little school room we set up for her in the in the basement she came upstairs and she said my mom the zoom isn't working I need some help I can't get into to class so so let me come down and see what we can do and I went down and one of my other younger children, I think just really wanted to play with me. We had been hanging out, you know, together and yeah. came down and I said, I need to help your sister. So I need to help her right now. And she couldn't handle being just in the room while I was out trying to help with the computer. It was a lot of, she wanted to play and was trying to climb on me and I said, okay, you're going to need to go. I need you to just go back up to the living room. You can play with someone else, play with your toys, but I need to help. Your sister is a time sensitive for her, for her school. And she wouldn't, go and she just she started trying to kind of close her sister's laptop and um so eventually I had to say like I I just got so frustrated I said listen if you don't go upstairs right now you're not going to see a screen for the rest of the day for any reason if you come (laughs) back down it's not going to happen either and you know I could see she looked really 
sad. And she kind of went upstairs and I could hear her as she was walking up the stairs, like, mom, just mom hates me, you know? And, um, I, you know, I could tell even in that moment as it was happening, it was like, okay, I know this is not, not a good idea. Like I could tell in that moment, okay, now. But what else do you do? You're like, yeah. Yeah. And I, I needed to call, you know, like a, a tech support person to help. I need to help the computer. We got it all figured out and she was, you know, good to go. But, you know, I just really needed a couple of minutes to help. Another. And again, it's like my oldest child, like with having four children, she gets the least of me of it. <laughs> else. Totally. Anyway. Is it always the youngest that has the hard time or is it she does everybody? Have a, she does have the hardest time. I, I uh, will sometimes hear comments from some of the other, the other kids like, I'm doing something with so-and-so right now. And they will say like, oh, well, of course you're, you're always busy. I'll get, I'll hear that a lot, which I wish may, maybe even well be, be the case that there's, I seem to always maybe need to be doing something for with the little somebody. one, but it is, it is hardest with the little one. She will be the one if I say I'm reading or I'm reading a book or I'm doing some one-on-one time with one of the kids. Sometimes it'll be a lot of like, I can, I can go another room and lock the door to do what I can do, but then I'll hear her like banging on the door, crying. Yeah. Um, Tell me about the sibling rivalry. Are, is there a lot of sibling rivalry? Um, yes, I, <laughs> I would say that, that there. And it, you know, it's it's a very different dynamic between any two. You know, if you were to pair off among among the the four, is the the ones that are closer in age to one another do tend to have more conflict. Um, do the older ones? Do you feel like the older ones get in a lot of conflict with the youngest? Um, not a lot, especially my. My oldest, I think, is at a point where she's kind of, I think, mature enough to see, like, all right, well, I'm just going to walk away from, <laughs> from you right. know, if, 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 you know, if any of the younger ones are trying to pick at her. I think she can kind of see, already see what's happening and right. does, doesn't does engage. I, maybe she's just old enough to be able to rationalize kind of see, yeah, what's going on. Um, but, yeah, there is, there, yeah, there is quite a bit of sibling rivalry. And do the, do, is there always somebody who's kind of the instigator? Um. Not really, no. It, I think it's um, it seems to be a pretty even. Okay, <laughs> even is the youngest assuming. ever the instigator? Sometimes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. I'm just wondering, like maybe this could be stemming from some of the sibling rivalry, and maybe this is an overflow of that, and that I don't know how the sibling rivalry relationship is playing out in your house, but maybe perhaps the little one is used to being protected. Sometimes we see that where you know we. We'll tell the older kids like, well, she's young, you know, just don't listen to her or don't bother her so much or, you know, she's little and the older kids kind of have to kowtow to the younger one sometimes. Sometimes we see that happen, especially in multi-kid families. I don't know if that's happening or not in your family. It may be happening a, a little bit. You know, it's, it's um, there are times where there's so much noise and everyone's, you know, fighting and it's, um, yeah. sometimes it is hard not to... I guess take sides in a way, especially yeah. if like what I think I see or think I'm seeing or I'm perceiving is that one person is the one picking on on the other one. So maybe when we take sides, then we create this, you know, this dichotomy where that's kind of our that's our MO. That's how we're showing up to the sibling relationship is that we're taking a side. So maybe your younger daughter could feel like you're on the older daughter's side because you're spending the time with her and you're not spending the time with the little one. So she feels like it's a, it's a something against her, so to speak. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. So I'm thinking if we can clean up the sibling rivalry, will this also benefit this other cooperation situation where we're seeing with the little one where she's constantly in, in your, she's just can't let you go. Mm-hmm. Right. So she just needs you all the time, especially when you, you know, it's it's like all of a sudden they don't need you until you're trying to help your older daughter with Zoom, right? Yeah. Because she notices, oh, mom's paying attention to her. She's picked her side, not my side. And so if we're picking sides all the time, then the kids are constantly vying to get you on their side, mm-hmm. even outside of the sibling relationship. So if we can clean up the sibling uh, dynamic, I think, and also add in daily special time for, uh, for, most, for two kids per day, I think... We, is what I would suggest for you. Like, you know, the oldest and the youngest go on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever. And the, the two middle ones go on the other days because having four kids, it's, it's too hard. I think if we do those two things over two weeks, I think you'll see an increase in cooperation. Okay. So let's tackle the sibling 
rivalry piece. We're going to take a break from our show to hear from our sponsors. Without their sponsorship, I wouldn't be able to bring you this incredible show free of charge. So I'll see you back in a few minutes. I'm excited to tell you all about Feathersnap Scout Smart Bird Feeder, a great example of how technology can connect people with nature in really cool ways. I don't know if you know, but I'm from Oregon and at our house, there are tons of birds. So this Wi-Fi enabled smart feeder combines state-of-the-art camera and app tech with an age-old pursuit, bird watching. The feeder includes a high-end camera that captures crisp four megapixel photos and 1080p video of your feathered visitors. Then use the FeatherSnap app expert trained AI identification model to nail down the species and categories the birds you see. I cannot wait to get the bald eagle on this camera. Tech that truly helps you tune into the world around you. Check them out today at feathersnapcam.com. That's feathersnapcam.com. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Try online therapy at betterhelp.com forward slash peace so you can be the best of yourself for you and your family. I began therapy in my early 20s and I believe it was the catalyst to a much deeper understanding and study of myself. Therapy single-handedly taught me how to be an adult in this world, a gift I'm grateful for every day. I've spent years in therapy and is what brought me to my parenting work and why connected parenting makes so much more sense to me. The foundation of therapy has catapulted me as a person into this entirely different realm, making me more connected mom, an all-around more grounded person. I really can't say enough about therapy and its benefits. With BetterHelp, you can attend your sessions completely online, making it ideal for any schedule. When you join BetterHelp, they match you with a licensed therapist using their brief questionnaire. Stop comparing and start focusing BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp dot com forward slash peace today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help. H E L P dot com forward slash peace. This episode is sponsored by better help. Okay. Back to the show. I'll tell you what I think really works is just trying to be as neutral as possible because the sibling relationship is something that's been going on for you know, how old's your oldest? 14? 14, yeah. Yeah. So some of these really, and how old's the youngest? 12? I mean, the uh, next, the next, the one? next oldest is 12. Mm-hmm. 12. So it's been going on for 12 years, right? The sibling relationship. And so it's a very circuitous path. Some, sometimes one child is right. Sometimes the other child is right. Sometimes, you know, somebody's the aggressor. Sometimes somebody else is the aggressor. And so when we see a certain snapshot in time, a certain thing happening with our kids, it isn't necessarily the full story of their relationship. And when we come in and say, you hit her, you can't hit her. What happened? We don't know. Did, did she trip her sister on the way up the stairs right before that? Did she say something like, you're dumb on the way to the bathroom? And is this just a retaliation? And so when we just catch that one thing and we act on it, we really dismiss the other interactions that have been going on between these two kids. So it's better just to be super neutral and say, oh, what's going on here, guys? What happened? What are you doing? Somebody's hurt. Oh my gosh, what's going on? And be curious. Even if you know what's happening, just to be curious and then to have them really tell you, she pushed me on the way down the stairs. She's so mean. I don't like her. Ah, come with empathy. She pushed you. Oh no, you guys are really struggling here. I'm so sorry. Not throwing the other person under the bus, but also giving empathy. Giving the empathy gets their prefrontal back online so that they can think, so we can talk about it, so we can get to a calmer place, hopefully. Then you ask the other child, what happened? What's going on? What are you doing? She pushed me and she said, I'm dumb. Oh, she pushed you. She said, you're dumb. This is so hard. I'm so sorry. Empathy, trying to get everybody calm. We don't really care what happened. It doesn't matter what happened. The the details of who did what and what was said is really for them to express to us, but we're not taking it in and trying to judge it. We want to hear it and we want to be able to let it go, but we're not going to take sides. If you can get them calmed down, and you probably will be able to for the older kids at least, then you say like, guys, what should we do next time so this doesn't happen? 
What can you do differently? And you have them to start to problem solve. What went wrong here? What do you want to say to your sister? What do you want to say to your brother? You know, you really kind of help them resolve the conflict without taking sides. And the more neutral you can be just in general as a parent, I think will kind of decrease this idea that they need to have you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does make sense. And I I will say when the kids are having any type of fight or rivalry of any sort, there is a lot of, um, they do seem to always be, I guess, keeping score in a way in in terms of like, well, who's getting in trouble and wanting to, you know, why not not want to be the one who got in trouble or feel like, well, last time I got in more trouble than, you know, so-and-so is getting in trouble for this time, you know. And um, so if trouble isn't a thing, if you're never, if nobody is ever getting in trouble, then there's no scorecard to keep. And so I think that piece is playing out probably in all other aspects of your parenting, just slightly. No, that, that does make sense. It does. So I think that's a big piece. So really working on that. And unfortunately, it's like you have to do that protocol. You have to like sit with them like a lot. And I would say whenever you hear any sort of kerfuffle happening, get in there right away and start using it because it will escalate. It will get to a bad place. And then you're going to have to come in and people are pulling hair and pushing people down and saying mean things. And it's like, if we can get in there sooner, we could avoid some of that. So I would try that. And that summertime is a good time <laughs> to practice that because you have a lot of interact. They are going to have a lot of interaction this summer because everyone does. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one piece. Um, then the other piece is I would start to do the daily special time. 20 minutes with two kids per day. They get to decide whatever it is, the activity that they want. You have to follow along like it's the most exciting thing you've ever done in your entire life. Oh my gosh. I love Super Mario Brothers. Please teach me everything about it. Whatever it is for 20 minutes. And that will hopefully fill their connection cups better. So that when you do have to step away and help somebody, they're not going to feel like, oh, wait, I didn't get it. I didn't get the connection. I want the connection. I need it. I need the connection because they know they're getting every other day, they're getting this deep dose of connection. It will be hard at first because your little one is not going to let you go. with (laughs) She's going to be like on fire. So I would prep her. Hey, this is what we're doing. What can I set you up with? That would be fun. I would do hers first so that she's filled up before you do the other kids. And I would really prep her for the day that she doesn't get it. You're not getting it today. And let her be mad about it and let her have her tantrum around it and say, I know, I understand it's really hard, but hold that boundary with her. Mm-hmm. And you'll muddle through because it's going to be hard the first couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm picturing it being a little bit tough <laughs> at first. It is going to be a little tough. And you can implement sibling special time. So maybe you want to do on the off days, you could do sibling special time where the youngest is going to play with the oldest or then maybe the next day, the middle one's going to play with the oldest so that they can have some sibling special time, 15 minutes of one kid being in control and 15 minutes of the other kid being in control. And that will bond them too. Mm -hmm. One other thing I was just thinking is you could do family games too, like uh, for 10 minutes a couple days a week, do hide and seek where you all are playing together. So just to create more camaraderie and togetherness. Yeah, that's a great idea. I know sometimes if we try to do like the family board games, it's um, sometimes those don't always go as well, especially if there's any game where one person can make a, I guess, offensive move. (laughs) Um, Some of of these games. Um, Yeah. And and somebody's losing and somebody's winning and there's a lot of hurt feelings. And I think sometimes when we can play chase or do a dance party or do musical instruments or make a video, you know, music video or like do something that's like a group activity as opposed to like a competitive game. Or if it is a competitive game, it should be all of them against you so that they can like bond to be you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In those moments where she's coming in and and she's losing it and she won't leave you alone. In that very moment, I would get down. I would abandon the Zoom for one minute. I would get down on her level and say, I cannot help you. I know you're going to be really upset about it and it's okay. You can have your feelings, but I'm going to stay here with your sister and I'm going to do this and just set that boundary with her and let her have a really big cry about it, even if she's crying and you're also setting this up, this computer. I think that's the best you can do in those moments. 
Yeah. When you when you don't have a heads up ahead of time that something's coming up, I know I know that's hard for kids, and um, it's hard for parents. It, it is, and it's funny because I know, like, I think probably a lot of people in our generation, you know, when I was a kid, of course, there was not an option to even be upset about. No, and, and so now there's almost this part of it. It's like, don't like, don't you see how kind I'm being? To you? Right? I'm, I'm trying like, so hard. Yeah. Do you know where I've come from? Yeah, Do you know what my yeah. parents would have said? And I, yeah, I think there's a lot of that that comes up for us. Yeah, which of course isn't fair to the kids, but um, no, but it's real. It is, yeah. It's real. It's palpable, and it's it, it. You know, I I don't know about you, but do you get this like heat in your chest and like feeling like you're totally overwhelmed, like the Zoom, and she's yelling, and what am I going to do? And then my head's going to explode. Yeah, I do for sure. And just some of the just a lot of the, you know, it's just a lot coming at sensory, of course. If ever, if everyone's making a lot of noise, and then. Um, you know, especially if another child wants to try to de-stress by going to like play some music, you know, and sometimes yeah. that's just one too many um, noises sources of sound. But yeah, uh, again, a couple of years ago, everything I this I wouldn't even be able to get to the place I am now for sure. Um, right, you're doing amazing I stuff. I can tell there's a lot, a lot to go for sure. Well, you're if you're listening to feelings and setting boundaries and not using punishments, then you are well on your way. So that's you should be proud of yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You should be. Um, I would try not to use the threats and bribes. I think like you said, you already know though, they just like, they eat away at the, at the connection piece. And I don't think long-term they really work. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I think at some point they'll be like, I don't care what you threaten. Like I'm going to do what I want anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Especially maybe your little one, she might be strong-willed. Okay. Anything else? Um... No, I don't think so. I mean, I'm certain there's a wide variety of things that that, that we could go and do. <laughs> well, but as far as this, yeah, I, def- I definitely will, you know, make more of that effort to have the the one-on-one special time, um, and then to try, especially when they're when they're fighting. I guess, like you mentioned, to I guess get into it a little bit a little bit sooner because there are a lot of times where, um, especially if I'm doing something, I can hear a fight starting, but I'll you know, sometimes we'll wait to see if they end up needing me because you know, sometimes they don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes they, you know, it really escalates. And then, and then, and then of course, by then, of course, it, it does tend to be that, you know, whoever may be actually laid hands on another person. But, right. That's then they're our, in trouble and it yeah. might not necessarily be their quote unquote fault. Right. Yeah. And um, usually the stronger, bigger ones end up winning when those things happen. And so then it puts the little ones at this place where they're like, oh, you know, I know I never win. I'm always losing if we don't intervene. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that I think that'll be good. I think that will decrease the needing to keep score. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Stephanie, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being part of our community. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And thank you for all of the work that you're doing. I listen regularly to your podcast and I've always, always learned a, a little something. Good. I'm so glad. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody, on the Peace and Parenting Podcast. And we'll see you guys next time. Drive into summer with the Honda CRV and Accord, your fun to drive weekend getaway vehicles. From Honda, the 2024 Kelly Blue Books KBB.com best value brand. So hurry in to the Honda Summer Event. For a limited time, well-qualified buyers can get a 2.9% APR on a 2025 CRV or 2024 Accord. See dealer for financing details based on 2024 Consumer Choice Awards from Kelly Blue Book. Visit kbb.com for more information.